The Bible. The Bible is the most important book that's ever been written in the world. The Bible was originally written in the Old Testament in Hebrew and certain portions, portions of it in, in Persian or in Chaldee uh, language, which is very closely akin and a sister language to the Hebrew. The New Testament was written in the Koine Greek. Now the Bible was inspired in these languages as they wrote them down. Tense mode and voice was all there that was absolutely inspired of God. And that is the inspired Bible. And so many people today, when they think about the Bible, they think about the King James Bible or they think about the Douay version of the Bible or whatever, but all of them are versions and translations of the Bible. None of them are the Bible. There's a... I, I get hate mail and people trying to teach me things uh, all the time, uh, sending letters to me. They don't tell me who they are or anything. And I got a little the attack about the Bible, the attack on the Bible. And uh, the person that, this is by Chick Publications, by the way, and uh, it is a, uh, basically it is says that the King James Version is the only, the only inspired Bible there is. Which is not true at all. Period. No matter how you stretch it out. Now, I want to show you a couple of little things here. This is a, <clears throat> a leaf of a Bible. This uh, is a Latin translation of the Bible. Latin is also a translation of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate, which the Catholic Church has used. I'll let you look at that. That was written, that, was, that Bible there, that Latin translation, uh, translation of the Bible was printed in 1628 by Beza. Beza was uh, John Calvin's, one of John Calvin's students. Now here is the Holy Grail of uh, most people's lives and that is a page out of the King James Version 1611 Bible. This Bible was printed, that page was printed in 1611 the first year that the King James Bible came out. Now, some of these pages sell for a thousand to ten thousand uh, dollars. They're very valuable. This is one of them right there. That is a lead page out of the original King James Bible. It's written in uh, 1611. 1611. Now that's a long time this side of the first century. Uh, Chick Publications uh, has a pseudo scholar, so called, writing this uh, little pamphlet. And what did people do <coughs> without a Bible before 1611? The only people in the world that was preaching from the Word of God were the Baptists. <coughs> Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> we are also studying church history. <coughs> And in America, <clears throat> the real America <clears throat> basically Roger Williams <clears throat> came to America and tried to found a colony. And he <clears throat> was helped to do this. Actually, he uh, There was another pastor here also. And they established the first religiously free colony. <clears throat> and the Puritans were fighting them so hard, they were imprisoning them uh, 
take away their rights, take away their properties and everything because they were preaching. They did not believe in the baptism of infants. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you something here. This is a page. This is the preface to the translation of the King James Bible. In the original King James Bibles. It's not in a lot of them today. But this was in the original King James Bible. <clears throat> The Bible, like I said, was written in Hebrew and Greek. Did people not have a Bible for 1611 years? You know, the Old Testament scriptures go all the way back. When Paul talked about the scriptures, he talked about the Old Testament. Now, there were translations of the Old Testament in Jesus' time. Did you know that? It's called the Septuagint. Now, the Septuagint is a Greek translation of the Old Testament. <clears throat> when Alexander the Great basically conquered the Western world, uh, all of the people spoke Koine Greek. Koine means common. The common language of the people, Koine Greek, Greek means the Koine, the common language of all the people. Even the Romans spoke in Greek in public meetings instead of Latin. Their coins were printed in Greek many times. Their public announcements were printed in Greek many times. Even though the Roman government conquered the, what was known as the Greek Empire, the Greek Empire con conquered them in culture and idea and philosophy. <clears throat> When Jesus came along, Jesus is the Son of God. He is the living Word of God. When he quoted the Septuagint many times, sometimes he would correct the translation of it. He would correct the translation of the Septuagint. Many times you would hear him, in, in the original Greek language, in the original manuscripts, you will see the difference. All translations of the Greek are translations only. I know a lot of people are just totally have been so brainwashed by the King James Bible and the philosophy today that, that you don't preach from an inspired Bible unless you preach from King James. There were many translations of the Bible before King James. There was the Geneva Bible that most of the Protestants and Calvin and his students used, and Luther. The Bible verses are not inspired. They were, the Bible originally was in scroll form. It was rolled up. <clears throat> All the Hebrew scriptures were a scroll, and you unrolled a scroll, and you had to go back and find the place. A codex, is this is what we call a codex right here. This is a a Bible that is bound in the back, and you can go to page numbers instead of having to unroll. Can you imagine how long the scroll would be to have all 66 books of the Bible in it? And the Greek New Testament was written on scrolls originally. Now, <clears throat> we come up to uh, the Protestant Reformation. Baptists were still preaching from the original Greek language. They would translate it into whatever they were speaking, but they would preach from Greek. The Catholic Church and Islam tried to destroy the Word of God. The Catholic Church and Islam tried to destroy the Word of God. They tried to burn every copy of it they could burn. And in all reality, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between Catholicism and Islam. They both killed millions of people. Uh, Islam outran them. They killed more. But the Catholic Church, if it was still in power today, would be killing just as many people as they did in the Dark Ages. It wasn't a wonderful, wonderful uh, war that Catholicism and, and Spain and, and France went into the Middle East and started killing Islam over there, taking the land back over. 
from Islam. It was not a holy war because they were not preaching the Word of God. They were preaching what we might call edicts. You do this, you do that. You don't read your Bible. You have a page from the Bible, you will die. Today, <clears throat> from the original Greek manuscripts and some from the Hebrew Bible, you know, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls are the greatest source of the Hebrew Bible, and a little bit of the New Testament also. Even though Islam and Catholicism tried to burn all the Bibles that they burned, and they burned millions, pages from old manuscripts and partial Bibles, etc., you can, they have caught them, and they, if you put one page on top of another, it would be more than a mile high, the ones that are left. Many of these Bibles were found in Catholic monasteries. And some were found hidden, buried. Baptists, they were called Anabaptists, they were called, if you want to look at church history up here, let's put it up here. <coughs> chart up here for church history. <coughs> Baptists were called by many names. They were called Christian first. They were called Montanists. They were called Novations. They were called Paterines. Paterines means to suffer. They were called Cathari. That means they lived uh, pure lives compared to the priests, etc. They were called Anabaptists. They were called Paulicians because they, they taught the writings of Paul. The Catholic Church, you went to church, you listened to the the priest, you, you confess your sins, and if you go up here on this chart, you'll find out when all of these different ideas, all these different uh, edicts were, were written by these uh, popes. All the way from Mariolatry, Transubstantiation, Indulgences, Purgatory, Satan Image Worship, Mariolatry, the Pope, the Catholic Church didn't begin until Constantine the Great coined it, the Church Catholic. And all of the Protestant world, I'm not a Protestant, I am a Baptist. All the Protestant world believed in church and state, the marriage of church and state. John Calvin never knew anything else, neither did Luther. When they came to America, the, the so-called Protestants came to America, there was no religious tolerance here whatsoever. No religious tolerance if it wasn't for the Baptists. Dr. John Clark and Roger Williams, there would never have been any religious liberty at all. Now, <clears throat> I have a little bit of asthma, so please excuse my coughing. When they came to America, They were still preaching from the original language, many of them, and translations. Dr. John Clark, even the doctor, he had a doctorate in Hebrew. A doctorate of Bible languages in Hebrew and in Greek and in Latin. He was familiar with those languages and preached from those languages. Dr. Roger Williams was a great preacher of God's Word. He taught a philosophy that the world had never known before. Freedom of religion, that God deals with mankind as a, with volition. And that mankind, man, must make a public profession of, of faith and uh, that they have shown repentance before they're baptized. You don't baptize infants, you baptize believing adults, and you baptize them by immersion. Now, when you go back to the King James Bible in 1611, there was a great problem in the world. 
there were Catholics in in uh, England, and there were Protestants in England, and there were Baptists in England, and many of these uh, many of these what we might call Pilgrim pro pro Progress, you know. You see Pilgrim's Progress, and you see the poor man that that um, that wrote the book. He was in prison. He is in prison for his beliefs by the Church of England. The Church of England <coughs> started with King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII uh, wanted. To, he was married to Catherine of Aragon, his brother's wife. His brother died, and he supposedly had to marry his brother's wife. Well. That was all right. He he consummated the marriage. Uh, she had a baby, but uh, he fell in love, and he was promiscuous. He was had a lot of women, and uh, he fell in love with a a little girl, Anne Bolin. He had also uh, having an affair with her sister, also. But he wanted to marry Anne Bolin. He was just crazy in love with Anne Bolin. And Catherine of Aragon was a Catholic. Henry VIII was a Catholic and a defender of the Catholic faith. But the Pope would not give him permission to marry Anne Bolin. And so he kept petitioning the, the Pope to let him marry her. They kept telling him no. Finally, he said, well, I'm going to marry her anyway. He said, I'm going to divorce myself from the Catholic Church. Pay attention to what I'm saying now, people. I'm going to divorce myself from the Catholic Church, and I'm going to start the Church of England or the Anglican Church. I will confiscate all of the Catholic property. I will excommunicate and run off every Catholic priest if they won't convert to what I believe. And the, the conversion wasn't much. They, they studied all the same things. They had all the same religion. They, well, in 1500, just go back here, all of these things that happened, you know, Mariolatry, all the purgatories, ain't an image working, all the way over here, transubstantiation, celibacy, everything was going up before you come over here to 1500. We got all of this. The Inquisition that started, regular, the Bible is forbidden. The Bible is forbidden. You had a page in the Bible, you died. The Church of England just changed over from Catholicism to the Anglican. And the reason why it changed was not, it was not what we call the English Reformation. Henry VIII wanted to marry Anne Boleyn. So he established a state church. He could have gone to Baptist if he really wanted to be a converted. He could have gone to become a Baptist and, and uh, maybe they would have given him a, a right to get a divorce and all this kind of stuff, but he didn't do that. He made himself the Pope, the head of the Anglican Church. And it went on and on. One of his daughters, uh, uh, Mary, Bloody Mary, went back to Catholicism after he was dead. He had a son that reigned for a short time. He wrote a liturgy for the Anglican Church. He did a little bit to try to reform the Anglican Church and get it away from Catholicism a little bit. Then he died, and then his sister, Mary, Queen of Scots, Bloody Mary, came on the scene, and she was killing all the Protestants and trying to bring it back. He was going to marry uh, Philip II of Spain, and, and uh, there was a great, uh, uh, well, Queen Elizabeth now comes on the scene later, after Mary Queen of Scots dies. She comes on the scene, and uh, <clears throat> she hires a Sir Francis Drake, a pirate, to uh, uh, build ships that will, the, the Catholic, or not the Catholic, but the Spanish Armada is coming after them to try to bring them back into Catholicism. This is all church-state business, people. Has nothing to do with God. I want you to understand that. It's only their interpretation of religion only. 
I know some of you it's going to be you're going to be in total shock. Study history. Anyway, there were some great storms, and and the storms kind of beat up uh, Philip II, and then they got in there and into the into the harbors, and they set the ships on fire, and also the British ships now under Sir Francis Drake were much lower ships. The Spanish great big models were very big, very tall out of the water, and they would go up and they would uh, throw lines over and pull the boats together and they got out there and they would swashbuckle. Sir Francis Drake was smarter than that. He said, I'm going to stand off here, I'm going to blow you out of the water. And I'm blowing the water so you've got less ship to, to miss. So he would, he set all the ships on fire and they blew them out of the water. Total different naval war for he changed it. Elizabeth divorced herself from Catholicism once and finally, except for Ireland. And there's where you have the Catholic and the Protestant revolutions constantly in Ireland. They hate the English. They came to America hating the English. World War War I <clears throat> was a real problem. They got involved in the Civil War and they didn't want to get involved in that because part of England was backing one side and et cetera, et cetera. England was backing the the South and the Irish didn't want to have anything to do with that so they wouldn't, they killed people. When they would go and, and get these troops together, they started the black troops, they hung a bunch of them in, in New York. The Irish mob. This goes on and on and on. And they, they would go in World War I. World War I couldn't hardly get in World War, in, into the war because of the Irish. Because America would protect England and they didn't have anything to do with it. In World War II, the same thing. They didn't want anything to do with it. Finally, America was tap, uh, attacked by Japan and then Germany declared war on us. And so we were in World War II, in spite of the Irish, <laughs> in New York and uh, in Illinois and wherever. The, uh, <clears throat> Finally, King James came on the scene. England was being torn apart by Catholicism and Protestantism and the Baptists. King James was a Protestant. He was the head of the King, the Church of England, and as far as he was concerned and his constituents were concerned, he was a God-sent ruler. And he was Jesus on the earth as far as they were concerned. And he thought that also. You know, in the Roman Empire, the emperor was worshipped. In the Islamic Empire, basically, they did everything he said under Islam, under Sharia law, and basically, and they won't say this, but he was his word was, was the word of God, his word was Quran. Now, I have this <clears throat> original letter confirming the translation of King James Bible. King James had the Bible translated in his language and by the way the King James Bible was always supposed to have the Apocrypha in it. Anybody that printed the King James Bible without the Apocrypha was to be killed and executed. <clears throat> now to the Most High and Mighty Prince James by the grace of God King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, defender of the faith. The translators of the Bible wish grace, mercy, and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now these were all translators of the Bible. Now when King James told them to translate the Bible, don't you translate anything different in that Bible than what we believe. If you come to something in there that, that says different, then what we believe, you change it, you do something. I don't want these people going into the Baptist ranks or going into the Catholic ranks. We're going to have this Bible to keep them in the Church of England. The King James Bible is a Church of England translation of the Bible. The King James Bible is a Church of England translation of the Bible and it was supposed to include the Apocrypha. 
Now, I have the Apocrypha, several Apocryphas. Uh, the Latin Bible has the Apocrypha in it, uh, the Latin Vulgate, uh, the Douay version, all of those, Jerusalem Bible, they all have the Apocrypha in it. First and Second Maccabees is a history book, or two history books. Those are very valuable history. The rest of it is just legends and things. Uh, the Catholic Church looked upon it as a secondary, not as high and holy as the Word of God, but should be included. King James included it in there on pain of death. Nobody was supposed to ever have a King James Bible that didn't have the Apocrypha in it, and that's the story, people. That's it. The Czech publications, they say, oh, well, that, that was an instrument of Satan and all this to, to taint the Word of God. The King James Version of the Bible was an English Church of England translation, very, very slanted to their beliefs. When the translators of the King James Bible come upon a word, baptizo, they said, what are we going to do? They had about 40 or 50 councils, maybe fit more of councils, when they come to words that they didn't know what to do with. Because if they translate it correctly, they would go and they would become Baptist. Baptized for the remission of sins, not because of the remission of sins, Acts 2.38. And as we studied earlier today, where John said, I baptize you because of repentance, not for repentance or to repentance, but because of repentance, because of the remission of sins. King James wanted a Bible to keep his people out of, out of the Baptist ranks and out of the Catholic ranks. It was a translation. It was a, what we might call, colored translation with things that his church believed. It had beautiful English, you know, of the day. And uh, <clears throat> they tried to make it a beautiful language. Many people can memorize uh, King James better than they can other translations. All of them are translations people. The original Bible is Hebrew and Greek. Now the King James Bible was translated from some from the Latin Vulgate mainly. Okay, the Latin Vulgate is a translation of a translation of a translation. Many of the Bibles have tried to be burned. One of the first Greek Bibles printed was the Texas Receptus, as they called it. It was Stephen's text. That Texas Receptus was a, uh, an advertisement slogan. This is a received text from God. King James was translated from Texas Receptus and the Latin Vulgate. Texas Receptus, when they gathered up all these Greek manuscripts, they didn't try to differentiate where verses should be, be there and should not be there. The Bible says that you shall not add to or take away from the Bible. All of them say that when in the King James Version, when they come out in the New American Standard, the New International Version, American Standard Version, whatever they came out with, it, they said, well, they've changed the Bible. No, they didn't. The Bible is Greek and Hebrew. All of the verses in the Bible are later. They're not any of the verses or chapters in the Bible. None of that is inspired of God, even though people really like to think it is. John 3.16, can you imagine John 3.16 without being John 3.16? How about this John? In our ain't logos, kai logos, ain't prostone theos, kai logos, ain't theos. That's John 1.1 1, 1 in Greek. That's this inspired Bible. The Hebrew the Hebrew Bible. Barashith Bara. Et Hashemayim we et ha'aretz. We ha'aretz. Hadya tohu v'hohu. We hoshep el p'nei ha'mayim. We ruwa elahim. Mer pejeth el ha'mayim. That's the inspired Bible. That's Hebrew. Every translation says something different. The Hebrew doesn't. You even get the 
the Jewish Publication Society, the Hebrew Bible, which is right over there, the Hebrew Publication Society of the Hebrew Bible, and it will translate, it will interpret what the Bible says. Not, it will not translate it literally. The Bible should be translated literally if it's translated. NRK, in, in beginning, NRK ain't hologos, in beginning kept on being the word. The word, word there is a Hebrewism. You could put the word Jehovah in there. In the beginning kept on being the Jehovah, and the Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because Jehovah kept on being God. And Jehovah is he who shall become, and Jehovah is Jesus, the Son of God, the one who became. Kaiho Gosarks again, I told John 1 14. And Kaiho uh, Gosarks, and the Word, the Jehovah flesh, he became and dwelt among us. We have a God, veil the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Hebrew and Greek Bible is inspired. Texas Receptus was a public they had the first Greek printing of the Bible. There were many Bibles, but they were all hand printed before that. You have three major Bibles, probably done by Constantine around 330 through 25 uh, AD. You got the Texas, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus, and Alexandrius. All of them are in new seals, they're all capitals. Some of them were complete Bibles, but see that. The Greek Old Testament is still a translation. Until they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they didn't have any Hebrew Old Testaments. Very little, very little of it was left. <clears throat> the Jews tried to put it back together about 600 A.D. in Hebrew. From the Greek. Not from English. Not from German. But from Greek. Because of the Greek Septuagint translation. Mm -hmm. When the Jews were carried off into Babylon, Babylon idea of creation very much influenced them. In Genesis 1 and 1 it says, in, in, in one of the beginnings, plural. Barashith is plural. In one of the beginnings, he had created God, the heavens and the earth. That's what the Bible says in one of the beginnings. It doesn't say in the beginning as it starts out in King James. Not in the beginning, but in one of the beginnings God created the heavens and the earth and he created that in eternity past. Not in time and space. The earth was created in eternity past. You know that from the Hebrew, not from the translations. It, you know, the, the Hebrew and Greek will get your theology straightened out if you allow it. But it takes work to do that. Now, in the finality of all of this, let me read to you what the translators wrote to King James when they presented this Bible to him. It is a Church of England Bible against the Baptist and against all other Protestants, the Lutherans and the Calvinists and against the Catholic Church and Baptist. Great and manifold were the blessings most dread sovereign, which Almighty God, the Father of all mercies, <coughs> disposed upon us, the people of England. This is the English translation. <laughs> okay. <coughs> when first he sent your majesty's royal person to rule and reign over us, Almighty God appointed King James. As far as they were concerned, he appointed King James over the whole world. For whereas it was the expectation of many who wished not well unto our Zion, that's the Baptist, that's the other Protestants. They already had the Geneva Bible. They already had the original scriptures, which the Baptists were preaching from it. John Bunyan, others went to jail because of it. Mary, Queen of Scots, killed so many Baptists in England, the blood ran. 
The streets ran with blood. That upon the setting of that bright occidental star, Queen Elizabeth of most happy memories, some thick and palpable clouds of darkness would so overshadow this land. He's talking about the Catholics and the Baptists and Calvin and Luther. That men should have been in doubt which way they were to walk and that it should hardly be known. They came out with this Bible to keep them out of Catholicism. Catholicism didn't have a Bible. You just do what the Pope says. You just do what the priest says. You confess your sin to him and he is the mediator between God and you and that's all. You do what he says, absolutely. You won't go to heaven without him. So now they're having all this problem in England, uh, which way to go. Who was to direct the unsettled state, the appearance of your majesty, as the sun in his strength. Now all of this, they capitalize him because he's deity. You have to realize that the King James was deity to them. And they refer to him as deity, over and over again. Instantly dispelled those suppressed and surmised mist and gave unto all the, the, that were affected exceedingly a cause of comfort, especially when we were beheld the government established in your highness, capital, deity, and your hopeful seed, his children, capitalized all of it, as deity would be. And by an undoubted title, this also accomplished with peace and tranquility at home and abroad. But among all your joys, there was none more filled in our hearts than the blessed continuance of the preaching of God's sacred word among us. They weren't preaching the Bible so much. They were still had all of the adherence to Catholicism, but they were changing it a little which is the inestimate treasure which exceeds all the riches of the earth because the fruit thereof extended itself not only to the time spent in this tran transitionary world, but directs and disposes men unto that eternal happiness which is above in heaven. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> then not to suffer this to fall to the ground, but rather to take it up and to continue in that state. They wanted their people reading their Bible which was translated to confirm what they believed. They believed in baptism or regeneration, they believed in infant baptism, and they believed in marriage as church and state, which were all contrary to the Word of God. Wherein the famous predecessor, Your Highness, did leave it, nay, to go forward with the confidence and resolution of a man in maintaining the truth of Christ, propagating it far and near, it is which has so bound and firmly knit into the hearts of your majesty's loyal and religious people unto you, that your very name is precious among them, their eye doth behold you with comfort, and they bless you in their heart, so that a sanctified person who under God is the immediate author of their true happiness, not Jesus Christ, but this divine sovereign, this majesty toward the house of God doth not slack or go backward, but in more kindles manifesting itself abroad in the furthest parts of the Christian dumb, by writing in defense of the truth, which has given such a blow that a man of sin, as will not be headed, healed, and every day at home, by religious and learned discourse, and by frequenting the house of God, by hearing the word preached, by cherishing the teachers thereof, by caring for the church as a most tender and loving nurture, nurturing, nurturing father, church and state, contrary to the word of God. There are infinite arguments of the right Christian religious affection in your majesty, but none more forcible to declare to others than the vehement and perpetuating desire of accomplishing and publishing this work, which now with all humility we present to your majesty, all in capital divine letters. For your highness had once, out of the deep judgment, apprehended how convenient it was that out of the original sacred language, that, that the original sacred language is tongues, 
Now we're talking about Texas Receptus, and we're talking about the Latin Vulgate. Together with the comparing of the labors, both in our own and other foreign languages, of many worthy men who went before us, there should be more exact translation of the Holy Scriptures. It's a translation, people. The Holy Scriptures are Greek and Hebrew. Everything else is translation. Into the English language, tongue, your majesty did never desist to urge and to excite those to whom it was commended that the work might be hastened and that the business might be expedited in a so decent manner and a matter of such importance might and justly require. And now at last, by the mercy of God and continuous of our labors, it is being brought into such a conclusion as that we now would have great hope that the Church of England, Church of England people, not Baptist, not Calvinist, not Lutherans. The Lutheran Bible is written in Greek. I'm not Greek, but in German. The Lutheran Bible is written in German. Calvin had the Geneva Bible. Brought into such a conclusion that we have great hopes that the Church of England shall reap a good fruit thereof. The Church of England. We hold in our duty to offer it to your majesty, not only as our king and sovereign, but also as a principal mover and author of the work, humbly craving of your most sacred majesty, that since the things of this quality have never been subject to censors of ill meaning, censors of ill meaning with the Baptist people, the Baptist proclaimed against the King James Bible, they protested against the King James Bible, and they burned so many Baptists in England, they ran out of firewood. They burned them at stake. And discontented persons, it may to receive approbation and patronage from so learned and judicious as our prince, as your highness is, in whose allowance and acceptance of our labor shall more honor and encourage us than all the, the calumniations and hard interpretations of other men shall dismay us. Baptist, Baptist. Baptist, the Geneva Bible. So that if on one side we shall be traduced by Popish persons, that's a Catholic, at home or abroad, who therefore will malign us because we are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known unto the people. They had to keep the Catholics, the only way you could keep Catholics and bring them to England was to give them a Bible. You read the, even the King James Bible, you read the King James Bible, you're going to leave Catholicism. That's what it's meant to do. If you read the Bible, you're going to leave Catholicism. Catholicism brought in the Dark Ages. Whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness. The Catholics didn't want anybody to even read and write. They wanted to keep people illiterate. Blind, leading the blind. Or if on the other side we shall be maligned by self-conceited brethren, that's the uh, Baptist, who run their own ways and giving likely unto nothing but what is hammered out themselves on their own anvil, how they preach the word of God from the languages. You know that during the Dark Ages, a Baptist pastor had to know Greek and Hebrew, and he had to memorize the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in those languages, and the whole Psalms in Hebrew. That's your requirements, people. We may resist and rest secure, supported within the truth of innocency of a good conscience, having walked the ways of simplicity and integrity as before the Lord. They're fighting these people. They're killing these people. As we've been studying church history, we find out while liberty of conscience was killed in America by the Puritans, by the Mayflower people, by the Pilgrims, 
we may rest secure and supported within the truth and the innocency of our good conscience, having walked the ways of civility and integrity before the Lord, and sustained without by powerful protection of your majesty's grace and favor, which will ever give continuance to honest and Christian endeavors against bitter censors and uncharitable imputations. He's talking about Baptists and Protestants people. And Catholicism. Catholicism, the only way you can keep a Catholic a Catholic is to take the Word of God away from him. Don't let him have a Bible. He can have one on a coffee table, but don't open it. Leave it be. It's just a book. It's something holy. It's a relic. The Word of God, people, is powerful. Even in King James or New American Standard, New International Version, New International Version, whatever it is, you can get enough truth out of it, you can get people saved. But if you really want to know what the Bible says, go to Greek and Hebrew. There's where it will make the difference between modern ideas, modern philosophies, philosophical and theological trends, and what the Bible really says. To honest and Christian endeavors against bitter censures and uncharitable imputations, the Lord of heaven and earth bless your majesty. <laughs> Anytime it says your majesty, it's going to be capital, that's divine. With many happy days, that as his heavenly hand hath enriched your highness with many singular and extraordinary graces, so you may be the wonder of the world in this later age of happiness and felicity, to honor of that great God and the good of his church. The idea of the church there is not a the church of God. It's the church of England, just like Catholicism. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and only Savior. But they don't really mean that. Not really. This little booklet goes on to uh, betray the work of Westcott and Hort. The Westcott and Hort, in their period of time that they lived in, they say, we would like to have the original Greek languages, and we're going to go through all the manuscripts, and we're going to try to find out what really family, family manuscripts this or that came from. Where did it come from? Where did this originate? Where did the story of the woman... Uh, caught in adultery and Jesus writing on uh, the ground. Where did that come from? It doesn't go back beyond 600 A.D. and the first scriptures were in the first century. Now some of the things they hear, they take the blood out of the Bible, they take so many important things out of the Bible uh, when you take away from the King James Bible. The King James Bible added those things to it. It didn't, it didn't take them out. It added some things from those manuscripts. It added them. We have better manuscripts today than we ever had in the history of the world. The Nestle Allen text, I believe, is just as good as the original signatures. You go back and you look at the apparatus upon there, it'll tell you everything. It will put things in brackets that wasn't there over three or four hundred or five or six hundred AD. It doesn't go back that any further than that. It'll tell you where they came in and what family and manuscripts they came from. The original Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew, and the, the preachers wrote it. I translated up here, you'll see Matthew through Revelation, in my own hand from Greek. And all the translation, all of the grammar, everything written in there is handwritten. And that's the way the original Bibles were. And sometimes they'd write notes. I wrote a lot of notes and wrote a lot of illustrations in there. And sometimes these notes and illustrations written by men was added to the Word of God. And there's where you have the woman caught in adultery. And sometimes they'll make an explanation. And there's where you have the added things what Nestle Allen and West Cotton Hort did was try to go back and find out what was there and what really wasn't there. They wanted a pure text. They wanted the Bible as it was written. Now people run down their great scholarly work by accusations 
just like King James did and his translators on the Protestant world, the Lutherans and the Calvinists and the, and the Catholics and the Baptists. If you're a Baptist, your people died in history over the King James Bible. They denounced it because it, it has very important translations bringing out baptismal regeneration, etc. Here are some of the things in the translations it says here. In Acts 8 and 37, and Philip says, Thou believest with all your heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, in the better translations of that, they added a few words in there some preacher did a long time ago. Not God, but some preacher, okay? It's not in the New American Version. In the New Living Translation, the English Standard Version, the Net Bible, New English Translation, the NRS, or 29 other Bibles. Not there. Because it wasn't there. <laughs> it was put in there later. Added to the Bible, they added to the Bible. Now, there's nothing there really wrong, except it's an explanation. For well, the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost, missing from the New International Version, Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort's Greek people. That's a, that is a Greek Bible, not a translation. And 22 other Bibles, because it wasn't there in the original text. It was added to the original text. Added. You know what added and subtracted mean? All they did was subtract the man-made translations and explanations out of the out of the King James Bible. Isaiah 52, 53, 12. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors, Mark 15, 28. Not in the New American Version or 20 other Bibles. Now, do you know that the 16th chapter of Mark from verse 9 on was not in the original Bible? Whoever wrote those verses in Greek totally was a different person with a different vocabulary than what the, her, the first part of Mark was written in. Totally different. Somebody added to the scripture and therefore you're picking up snakes and you're doing all this. This was your, your charismatics and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about people that believe in the Bible. If you're a charismatic, you believe in constant revelation. I'm a Baptist, I believe in the revelation that's always been given and that's our full, full book. It's our instruction manual for faith and practice. The Bible is. Not what we think, not what we what we Somebody says that God told them this. You've got all of these modern prophets, people. All kinds of modern prophets. Prophesying all the time. The Bible was completed. We don't need any more modern prophecies. I hear this world green, green, green about this woman prophet. Green, green, green talking about the political situation in America. She's not a prophet, people. She's not a prophetess. She's an imposter. When people stand up and give interpretations and talking in tongues, that's, that's washing away the real importance of the Bible. Those things are gone. Prophecies, speaking in languages that you didn't have to learn, and now they got it in the unknown language because of King James. That was something added to. You know, added to the Bible, added unknown tongue, that was added. It's a, a language, speaking in a language. If you went into Africa, you went in some place in the early Bible days before the Bible was completed, they could speak in those languages without ever having learned them. Paul said, I speak in more languages than all of you. He said, but seek the greater gift. We live under the dispensation of faith, hope, and love today. That's what we have. Those are the gifts. 
We don't have the gift of pastors and prophets and apostles anymore, unless you're a Mormon or a Catholic. The Word of God is our full, full, complete text that we need. And it is valuable. It is so valuable that you can use it in any translation. But King James has not inspired people. King James was a was a King James Bible for the Church of England. It's King James. Do you understand what King James means? It's real simple. Well, a guy with one eye and half brain ought to be able to figure that one out. King James Bible. That's a Church of England Bible, people. It was written against Bap it was written against Baptists and Protestants and Catholics and for the Church of England only. Our Father, we send this message out. I hope you can use it. I hope people can understand from it. They can read their King James Bible if they want to. They can read New International Version or whatever, but they need to understand that your word was written in those languages that they were taken from. King James wasn't even taken from them. Father, thank you for preserving your word in the original languages to the day that we live today, that we have Greek texts and Hebrew texts that are as good as the ones that they signed, Habakkuk or Ezekiah or Daniel or Ezekiel or David or Paul, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John. Thank you that you preserved your word. Please forgive me what I failed you. Please people open people's eyes to what translations are and what the inspired word is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.